everybody welcome back to my channel this is the review for uh, black ink chicago the new season season five um episode 11 now i don't know how they doing these seasons i would guess this would be a new season but i guess they're just continue continuing on the seasons how they go so this is black ink crew chicago season five episode 11 um don't mess with latifah or queen latifah however she says it before we get into anything, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button, and um, share this video as well. Let me know what you guys think. Um, off the bat, I just want to apologize because I am feeling so sick right now, but I tried to do a little, little something with myself. I don't have on any makeup, but I do have on my mascara and my lip. Of course, a lady always keeps a nice lip popping, but um, I apologize. I sound nasally as hell. Forgive me for that, but I'm still going to try to be as entertaining as I can for you guys. So we're going to get right into this little review. So the episode starts off now. It's Ryan giving like the little rundown of his new shop. He's reflecting on everything from the old shop. And it's actually two days later from him making the announcement from the last episode that he is giving Van... Um, he is letting him be the owner of the old nine mag. Now, as you remember from the last episode or last season, however they're doing it, um, they had a big party to do a grand opening for the new nine mag um, tattoo shop that Ryan has. And so at that um, event, he also made the announcement that he was going to let, um, not Ford, but uh, Van take over as the manager of the old nine mag, right? So it's um two days later and so like i said ryan is starting off he's his main thing is he don't want none of that old ratchet ass bullshit that was in the old nine mag in his new nine mag so all that fighting all the drama all the weed all the strippers he ain't trying to have none of that shit all right we are upscale upscale establishment and we don't want none of that that ghetto trash shit around here okay so he is um, meeting with the new staff, and he welcomes them. Gina is still there. I don't know if y'all remember Gina now, but Gina's the little white chick that was his assistant. Mm-hmm. They fucking. Yeah, they fucking. Um, Brittany is still there as well. She was the piercer that was there um, when they was in the last shop. That um, She looked real ratchet, but yeah, she's still there as well. She's over at the new 9 mag, and... Um, there's a new shop owner there, or shop manager. Her name is China, and so China is running down, running down Ryan's new rules of his new shop. He's got a bunch of new artists in there. Nothing is the same. He said he don't even want the same goddamn furniture. He wants everything new up in that bitch. Which hey, out with the old, in with the new. Okay. So some of Ryan's rules are, um, as China is running them down, um, when Ryan is in a meeting. Or is he is doing a, or if he is doing a tattoo, he is not to be disturbed. So you just can't basically walk up in there and be like, "Hey, yo, what's up? You know, what's good, my nigga? What we doing later on?" No, you can't do none of that. If he's having a meeting, don't go up in there and don't disturb him. Okay, leave that nigga be. Another rule is that um, because they are more of a diverse tattoo shop, their music has to be more diverse, okay? So they can't have um, Drip for Sale playing all the time. They can't have Migos playing all the time. Nana don't necessarily know what a Tatiana is, although her grandbabies might be Tatianas. She don't necessarily know what a Tatiana is. So they need to have more diverse music that they want to listen to up there, which I don't blame them. Because um, I, I don't necessarily want to go into a tattoo shop. That's one thing that I can say gets on my nerves because I've got plenty of tattoos and piercings. Yeah, I'd like to go into a tattoo shop where I'm not hearing um, metal shit all the time. And not, not nothing against metal music, but I mean, I wouldn't mind hearing some Chris Brown up in the um, tattoo shop. A little SWV or something. Hell, Flow Rider, something. I'm just saying. I'd be alright with that. Meanwhile, back at uh, Van Shop, it is slow as fuck in there. Ain't nobody up in there doing a goddamn thing. Charmaine sitting around looking crazy. Um, what's his motherfucking name? Big cockstrong ass nigga Don. He on his phone. Bella ass is there. Why Bella there? I thought Bella started off with Ryan. But somehow or another, her and her ratchet shit, she ended up over there with the bullshit. So he said, fuck you too, bitch. You gotta go. <laughs> fuck you too, bitch. Call the cops. I'm gonna give you the blood this motherfucking Mark Don. <laughs> I just had to get that out real quick. But, um, 
They, they ain't doing nothing over there. And Bella's like, so how is this new 9 mag, old 9 mag shit gonna work? And Don and Charmaine are both like, I don't know. Van is in charge of this shit. We don't know what the fuck going on. Just like you don't know what the fuck going on. So we gonna... This piece of hair getting on my nerves. So we gonna find out what the fuck going on just when you gonna find out what the fuck thing you gonna know. Going on. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Next thing you know, a hood ass nigga walk in. This nigga name is Steak Tacos. Steak Tacos is the nigga's name. You know, niggas, niggas, niggas. He announces that um, Van now welcoming your new shop owner of Nine Mag. Van Johnson. He has bitches coming in throwing rose petals like they on coming to America like they announced in Hakeem. He got some nigga bringing in a throne for him and he puts the throne right in the middle of the goddamn tattoo shop and he just pounced up like he that nigga with his little scoop bald head ass. You just go, really nigga? Van, you're doing the most, Van, and the most is too merch. You're doing too merch of the most and the most of the too merch. Just stop it. Just, just. niggas, 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 niggas. So he comes in and he comes in with a bunch of hood niggas. All of these Chicago really niggas come up in there looking like a bunch of goddamn wild pack of animals, too. They all come in with their Chicago really shit. They all coming up in there with pizza, talking about they eating pizza and taking over. Even Don was looking like, what the fuck? What, what are you niggas in here doing? I was even like, wait a goddamn minute. Who is all these hood trash niggas coming up in here with pizza? And it was even a couple of hood trash girls up in there. Just all in the mix of shit. So he come in there and he got a list of rules himself for his own little ratchet ass shop. Now, if you ask me, rule number one needs to be, it needs to be some order around that motherfucker. Can't nobody be up in there drinking, can on, like y'all ain't got no goddamn sense. Get a hold of that bitch. That, that's what's going to fuck you up. That's what's going to fuck you up, man. You need to get real these niggas in. They doing too much already. His first rule is that he's right whenever he's wrong. Whenever he's wrong, he's right. That's how you're going to fuck up, okay? Rule number two, that shop is a lily-free zone, which means lily and no associates or anything that has to do with lily ain't allowed up in there, which I completely agree with. Lily should not be back. Lily start way too much goddamn shit. Lily the type of bitch, she can't hold her liquor. Y'all can't take her out nowhere because she always up in the mix of shit. She ready to fight. She ready to take her clothes off and the shoes off. She just ready to do some ratchet shit. She the type of bitch that wants to go out and do hood rat things with her friends and you don't necessarily need to bring her ass around. I'm just saying. That's just my thoughts on that. His next rule is that, um, Bella's government name is Latifa, and so she shall be addressed as <laughs> Nigga, you ain't shit, man. You ain't shit. That girl, her, her government name is Latifa, right? Her nickname is Bella. You got South Africa over here and Eastern Europe over here. <laughs> How that shit, how them two meet up, I don't even know. But hey, it is what it is. And so he, I got a feeling he knows that maybe she don't like her name because he's like, your name is Latifa. And so you're going to be called Latifa from here on out. And she's like, ah, right, yeah, whatever. That's some bullshit. You Bella. Come on, girl. She's so fucking crazy. And lastly, he, his thing is, he wants to be referred to as Mr. Johnson while they are on the job. Now, sir, you don't do nothing that's like a fucking boss. You come up in there on some bullshit and got the nerve to want niggas to respect you and respect what you say and call you Mr. Johnson. Sir, I will call you Mr. Clean with all that head that you have, but I will not call you Mr. Johnson. Okay? Well, we're going to move right the fuck along from that, child. Come on now. He got his goddamn mind. Then he introduces the new artist that he has there. Again, all hood niggas. 
all hood niggas. And then he proceeds to start treating, this is start pisses me off about Ben. He started treating Bella like shit. Okay, if you don't like the girl, just say you don't fucking like the girl and fire her ass. Tell her ass to go. But to degrade her, tell her she needs to get out there and shovel the goddamn sh um, snow. She needs to pick up the rose petals that your goddamn, um, Rose bears got damn threw down everywhere. They gonna tell this bitch she needs to get the shirts that's already folded, unfold them, and fold them back even better than they already folded. Like he started doing some being like on some real dickhead shit with her. And I don't blame her one bit for getting pissed off, cussing his ass out, and quitting. She left. Which I don't fucking blame her. I would have fucking left too. Like, dog, you who the who the fuck do you think you are? Fuck you and fuck both motherfuckers that look like you. You're not finna talk to me and just do me any kind of way. So good for you, Bella. She stood up for herself. She went up and quit. But then, nigga, that's he got the. I think he got the little man complex. He got something going on in his mental that makes him think that it's okay for him to just be the, the, the way that he is. And I like Ben. That's I like Ben. But when he, I don't like you like this. Mm -mm. I don't like that. I don't like Charmaine is back at WGCI Radio, and she is interviewing for, um, she asked him how he's been doing since he had the episode where he was going through his depression. Well, I shouldn't say episode, since he's been deep in his depression. Being somebody that suffers from depression himself, I know it's not an episode. You can have episodes, but depression... That's the real thing. Anyway, we get into my personal business. We ain't even talk about me. We talk about boy. But, um... She asked for how's he been since he had his breakdown when they were in, um, what was it, Puerto Rico or whatever, last um, couple of episodes, whatever, they were in Puerto Rico, that's when he was having suicidal thoughts and he was saying all these things that were making his friends worry. And he said really that music has been his therapy, he's been in the studio a lot, and that he's just really trying to get back on his thing with his music, which you fucked that up with London on the track, and I'm a big fan of yours for, I'm a big, big fan of yours, but the fuck that you, you fact, I mean the facts that you fucked that up with London on the track, I think that may have something to do with your depression as well, because you fucked up a real good opportunity, as well as fucking up a real good thing that you had with Nikki. I'm not even finna get into all of that. That's just my opinion. Anyways, speaking of Nikki, goddamn Charmaine with her goddamn messy ass, she brings up the fact that Nikki was seen on a video in a strip club with 50 Cent, and 50 Cent was giving her racks of money to throw up there. And so she asked for what he think about that. For was like, oh, man, you know, I, I don't know. I ain't even see it. I ain't even see it. And Charmaine didn't even believe that shit. Charmaine was like, oh, really, For? Really, you didn't see it? Okay. Oh, you didn't see it for it, for real? Nick, you, Nick, you seen that shit. If I don't even follow Nicki and I seen the shit, I don't follow 50 neither, but I seen the shit. Nicki, you... You seen that shit for it anyway, but you just like, whatever. I don't blame you because you ain't trying to see your new bitch with some, your old bitch with some new dick anyway. I don't blame you. Fuck that shit. I'll be the same with you. I ain't see shit. <laughs> Ron and Rachel have dinner and um, they talk about their kids. They talk about their son who's 10 years old who is now into basketball and he wants to impress girls. And let me tell y'all, I got a 7 year old who already has little girls following him around, who he already thinks little girls are pretty. I'm not ready for that shit. I'm not ready for it because I'm one of them kind of mamas. I don't like, I don't care who the little girl is. I don't like you. I don't know you. I don't want to get to know you. I don't want to know your mama and them. I probably know your mama and them if you're from Austin. And I probably didn't fuck with your mama back in the day. Your daddy was probably a hoe. I'm not even finna do it. I probably didn't like your grandmama and them neither because they probably got into it with my mama and them by something. So no, mm, I'm one of them kind of mamas. I want to know. You like a little girl? What's her last name? Who her people them? Because I probably know who the fuck they are. Nope. And if I know I'm nope, I don't like you. I don't like nothing about you. I don't like the ground that you walk on. I don't like your shoes. I don't like your sway. I don't like your eyebrows. I don't like your nose. I don't like nothing about you. And that's just me. And I don't apologize for that. Ryan says that he likes having structure in his new shop. He likes being able to have people that do all the work for him and he can just sit back and get paid. And I, that, I, that is my goal. That is my goal in life to eventually be at a point in my life where I can have people working for me. I, I've prayed on many things and that's between me and God that I've prayed about and I'm, you know, 
steady trying to, you know, stay grounded and focused and stay determined and motivated on, on what I see or where I see my goals to be. And I pray to God that I can be at a point in my life one day when I can have people working for me, where I can be taking a nap and I can have money still generating for me while I'm sleeping. That is my goal. And I can compl I completely understand what Ryan is talking about when he's like, look, I don't want none of that ratchet shit over here in my new shop. I just, I can't have that. That's not what I'm looking for I'm not with it it is what it is and I ain't even mad at him for that moving right along oh one more thing that he does say as well he says that um Van runs his shop the way he wants to run it Ron runs his shop the way he wants to run it as well Van gives him a check every month and he does not neither one of them get into each other's business about the shop they run it how they want to run it which seems to be working fine for them but uh Van you could damn sure take some tips from Ryan on how to run your shop. I'm just saying. But for real, for real. Moving right along from that. Back at the Ratchet 9 Mag, they ain't got no heat. It's cold up in that bitch. And Charmaine letting it be known. See, Charmaine like me. If I'm uncomfortable and y'all already in the Ratchet situation, you finna hear my voice. I'm finna let you know how cold I am. My nipples is hard. Somebody need to go... So go do something because um I, I just can't even do it. Somebody do something. But they remind Charmaine, Charmaine, it's cold in here, but your breath is the hottest thing popping up in these streets. <laughs> they do Charmaine so wrong. They talk about Charmaine so wrong. But she ought to be goddamn used to that bitch. But I mean she she does too goddamn much as it is. So she gives these niggas a reason to talk about her and crack on her the way that she does. Because she just does too much some goddamn times. But they wrong. They wrong. But yeah, they were saying her breath was the hottest thing popping on them streets. It was hotter than Popeye's, baby. It was gone. So, um, Ford tries to go and holler at Ryan. Now, y'all, so the old 9 mag and the new 9 mag are separated by a fucking door, by a motherfucking wall. I'm thinking when Ryan was doing all this talk about the new 9 mag this, the new 9 mag that, I'm thinking you... Way across goddamn Chicago, some goddamn where. No, nigga, you right next door. What? <laughs> I mean, I get it. You, you're you not at the same shop. Although he did say it's one shop with two locations, which is the left shop and the right shop. It's like the Twix. You want the left Twix or the right Twix? Bitch is still the same goddamn Twix. But it's just a different environment, which I get it. One is a ratchet ass environment. The other one is a middle class environment. I get it. You know, it's, I, it just depends on what kind of mood you feel. You feeling like city girls? You finna go over there to Van and them shop. You know what I'm saying? You feeling like um, Lil, Lil, Lauren Hill, Beyonce? You finna go over here to, to Ryan and them shop. It just depends on... On how you're feeling for that day. But um, Ford goes and knocks on the door and tries to get in there and holler at um, Ryan. But Gina stops him. Gina basically denies this nigga access. Gina is on her motherfucking job. When I tell you, Gina is like that little, that little yap yap dog, the little chihuahua dog that's gonna bite at everybody that try to come at his owner. That's Gina. She ain't having that shit. You come, what you need to speak to Ryan for? Okay, hold on. You wait right here at the door. I'll be right back. And for like, nigga, really? Word? She like, yeah, word. Word up. Wait right here. I'll be right back. So she goes to the back, tries to look for Ryan, and for knocking on the door, ring the doorbell. He like, damn, my nigga, like, for real? Like, what, what the fuck? So finally, Ryan comes out around like, hey, my nigga, what's good? What's good? And for it's like, what's good? Shit, like. What the hell? You tell me what's good. I'm trying to come over here and see you and holler at you and they deny me access. And Ryan is like, my nigga, because it's a completely different environment over here. That's why. I'm not trying to get into the same bullshit that we had over there. Anything that's that's coming from over there that's bad energy, that's bad juju, I don't want nothing about it. So Gina is on her motherfucking job because that's what I told her to do. So he's like, well, damn. You told her not to let me in too? And he was like, bro, listen, you know you always got a spot here at my shop. I told you that. You can go on tour. You can do what the fuck you want to do. But you always got a booth here at my shop. You just got to, you can't come over here on that bullshit. Which, niggas got to understand. Well, you know what? I'm going to get into that in a minute. But he's just basically letting him know, look, I'm not with the hood shit. 
You want to come over here, you can come over here, but you can't come over here on that ratchet shit. Either we going to be city girls and Cardi B, or we going to be on some, some, um, some, um, LMA and some goddamn, um, Jennifer Hudson over here. But we ain't finna do the ratchet shit. It ain't gonna work. So you decide. Bella and Lily are having drinks. Why? Why is Lily back? Why is Lily back here, y'all? Why is Lily back? Why? Que? Por que? Por que Lily back? Why? She gets into too much shit. But then again, you know what? I just answer my own question. She's good. She's good for ratings. She's good for the money. And they're drinking. So you know it's about to be a shit show. Mm, mm, mm. So neither one of them have jobs. Of course, you remember um, Lily caused a whole motherfucking ruckus. And she ended up quitting where she was at. Well, basically, she got into it with everybody, so she quit. And, you know, she got fired at the same damn time. Um, Bella just walked out and quit of the nine mag because of what the fuck um, goddamn band was putting her through. So now one of these hoes have a job. So Bella's no longer living with Lily. She has her own place with her baby. But again, now one of these hoes got a motherfucking job. But y'all can afford to sit up here in a motherfucking bar and drink your fucking troubles away. That's the wrong thing to do, boo-boo. You know, you, you, you going backwards. You need to be going forwards. So they talk about all the shit that's happening in the shop, how Van has been treating Bella like bullshit. So Lily is, she's got that itch. She's got a hankering to be on some ratchet shit. She says, you know what? I don't want to be petty, but I feel like being petty and I feel like doing some petty shit. Which Lily, we all know it's going to be a shit show with you, baby. Why y'all let Lily back? Why y'all let Lily back? Back while y'all letting the ass back. God damn. Back at Ryan's shop. Um, four is um, first of all, Ryan got a whole poster on the wall of him like death row. Like he's in a Suge Knight position, and all the rest of the artists are down below. It looked like the death row poster with Snoop and um Pac and um what was that? Snoop and Pac and um Suge Knight all of them. This nigga like like death row records. That's not a good motherfucking omen, nigga. I don't want to idolize Death Row Records. Where the fuck is Suge right now? The only nigga that's doing good out of Death Row was what, um, what motherfucking, uh, Snoop, yeah, and it was Dre. But, I mean, come on now. Don't be like Suge, nigga. Be like Mike. No, don't do that. Mm-mm. No, no, don't do that. <clears throat> Gina shows for his spot, um, his little space over there at, um, the tattoo shop. And um, China has a contract for Ford to sign. Now, a part of the contract says that Ryan gets a percent for each tattoo that he does. Plus, he has to do a payout at the end of each night. Now, Ryan is like, now this is some bullshit. Because uh, Ryan is my homeboy. So, why the fuck should I have to, to do all of this and do all of that? I had a conversation with him, and you know that's my homeboy. And so, trying to try to, uh, China is trying to let him know. Well, I'm the shop manager, and I had a discussion with him as well. And these are rules apply to everybody in here, including you. So, Ford's like, nah. Well, um, I'm gonna have to think about that because you know I, I I just don't feel like this should have to apply to me. Now, look here, niggas gotta understand. I'm not in a successful place in my life to where I can, I can like shun niggas out. But this is what I'm saying. When a motherfucker gets to a certain level of success, you can't expect them to just stay who they were on certain things. For perfect example, my beautician who does my hair, she started off doing my hair literally in, she was a kitchen, oh, excuse me, I'm eating my cough drop. She was a kitchen beautician. She would do my hair in her kitchen, in her living room, in her dining room. She now has her own shop. She has her own space. She's doing her own thing. So, yes, the prices are going to go up, including for me, the, even though I've been one of her first customers. Now, I don't see nothing wrong with that because in the end, you're still supporting 
your people. You're still supporting the black business. You're still supporting the brand. So the fact that she would get upset because you feel like your homeboy shouldn't charge you what he's charging everybody else. He's trying to elevate and he's trying to fucking grow. How is he growing if he's still doing the same old nigga shit? That's what got him in the fucked up situation that he was in in the first place. And that's what he's trying to get you and the rest of these niggas to understand. You can't necessarily stay who the fuck you used to be. Sometimes you have to elevate and you have to grow. And if niggas don't want to do that, either they're going to stay with it or they're going to move the fuck on. So for it's like, well, look here. Y'all can hold on to this contract. Tell Ron to holler at me later. Um, hopefully sooner rather than later. But I'm going to go over here to the other nine mag and get ready for a client that I have. And they're like, okay, well, you know, we'll tell them to holler at you. But it's like, for my nigga, come on. I'm sure if you were to have a conversation with Ron and be like, look, I don't necessarily agree on this. Can we work this out? Maybe you get this much or maybe we do this instead. But you, you can't just expect him to just say, okay, I pay my booth rent and then that's it. No, 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 no. He's getting more clientele. He's getting more known. He's at a certain level of class. He's at a certain level to where his artistry is. And either if you want to be a part of that and a part of that brand and a part of the upscale shit that he's trying to do, this is a sacrifice that you're going to have to fucking make. And it's not like you're not good and you're not going to make your money back. Come on now, four. Come on now, dog. It is what it is. Four does this dope ass tattoo on WNBA um, Sky. When she plays for the Chicago Sky, her name is Lane Harper. He does this dope ass breast cancer um, ribbon tattoo on her forearm. It went from the top all the way to the bottom, and I fucking love it. I want to get one because you know I, my grandmother had breast cancer. I lost my mother to cancer. I lost my aunt to cancer. Cancer is something that runs in my family unfortunately and i've lost a lot of people to cancer so that that tattoo was was really dope i like that tattoo good for you for see get into doing that shit right there and stay focused on that stop worrying about this other bullshit all right y'all it's the night we've been waiting for it's the ratchet reopening of the old nine mag and of course they got liquor they got hood niggas they got weed they got alcohol it's about to be litty like a titty ain't nothing changed up in there i mean it was straight hood it was about 50 1100 niggas and i say probably like five females and that's including the strippers of course, Charmaine is the loudest goddamn one. Charmaine just does. She's Charmaine is a beautiful girl, but she just does too much. You ever see them real pretty girls? It's just loud, just loud. Like, why are you so loud, girl? We hear you. I heard you, girl. Just loud, and I get because I could be loud sometimes too. But it's like, I, no, I'm not not like that now. God damn, you can hear that bitch from here to there. I mean, goddamn, from the window to the wall, you can hear that bitch. But, um, Lily and Bella come in and crash the fucking party. They walked in on some bullshit, ready to fucking fight, ready to fucking get into it with everybody. Lily walk in, oh, oh, like she, like, what's up, bitches? What's up now? Blah, blah, blah. So immediately, she comes in, they start getting into it with with um goddamn van they start getting into it with charmaine and it got <laughs> the argument was going back and forth but the shit made a complete left once again when lily come out her mouth watch what you saying my nigga Now, it got quiet as, as a motherfucker in there. I don't know if that was just good editing or what, but it got so goddamn quiet, you could hear a mouse piss on cotton when that bitch said my nigga. Because look here, I, I get most people are okay with that. Me, I'm not really okay with that. With, with I'm sorry, my nigga, my nigga, that word belongs to black people. It is what it is. Call it what you want, say what it is. But just don't come around me if you are of another race and you without my nigga this, my nigga. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's not a way to get cool with me. I don't care how many kids you got with a black man. I don't care about none of that. No. I don't, I don't, I don't care who your first girlfriend used to be when you was back in school. I don't care what neighborhood you grew up in. Don't come at me with that my nigga shit. That's just me though. So... 
they get into it from there. Bella tries to stand up for herself because she was spitting some real shit to Vance. She was like, you know what you do is fucked up. You treat damn near every woman in here just very disrespectful. You talk to us any kind of way. You cuss us out and you think that you can just be verbally abusive to us and that's not right. And I commend her for a moment. She was standing up for herself. But Van quickly shut all that goddamn shit down. He cussed her ass smooth out. I mean, he was on some disrespectful asshole. <clears throat> excuse me, asshole shit. I get they was probably all drunk. Um, I'm sure Lily and goddamn Bella was drunk. But Van just, he, he just went off on the girl. And he did not have to go off on her the way that he did. That was just, that was completely uncalled for. Shermaine is like, you know what? If this is the reason why Ryan dropped this goddamn uh, shop, I completely understand it. But you know what? I don't want nothing to do with the fuckery either. I'm out. She took her bottle. And she was out. That was perfect timing because I needed some water. But y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. I must say, I thought it was very entertaining. I'm looking forward to the rest of this season. It is full of ratchetry and I am here for for its baby. Let me know what y'all thought about the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this. And I will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.